Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to tutorial 6 in this remaster of making an RTS game in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, we'll adjust our camera height based on terrain. This video did not exist in the original series for UE4 and is new to this series. This video and the series have been brought to you by Patreon sponsors. And if you want to help this channel out, all you have to do is hit that like button and you know, if you hit the like button, why not hit the subscribe button as well? If you want to take your support just a bit further and have a bit of extra change at the end of the month, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. Okay, open up your projects and we will make a start. All right, here we are back inside the editor. So we can now zoom, pan, move the camera, edge scroll, but we have this terrain. We have mountains there, this awful divot thingy, which you should never use in a game because that is not well shaped. But let's say this exists and we want to move the camera through it. What happens currently is, well, we end up clipping through. Now, of course, we could do a collision test, but all that's going to do is move our camera directly against the ground. We're just not going to clip through it. But it won't move the pawn itself upwards it won't move with the terrain. So what we are going to do is move the camera with the terrain. And as I said, there are gonna be two events we do on our tick. One we do for smoothness, which is our zoom, and the other one we're doing on our tick for the camera is the adjustment, because the adjustment needs to happen almost every frame for this to work well. I mean, take a look at that little divot there. There's steady, shallow uh, decline, then it plateaus, and then there's steepness. So just to be on the safe side, it's easier to run this on tick so we know what we're actually doing with it. And this is the first one we're actually gonna do in our camera pond. All right, actually we set the arm length the camera pond. I forgot about that. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to create a new function called adjust camera height. And we're going to put this into a category called camera subcategory called height. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll draw a line from the camera to the ground. So I am going to do a line trace by channel. Okay, so here's where we run into our first issue. We need a particular channel. So we're gonna come back to that in just a moment. But before we do, we're gonna do get accurate location. And this will be our start location. We are then going to do vector minus vector, which in Unreal 5, you can just use subtract. And you can actually plug almost anything into there and it will convert it over correctly. And we want to subtract a ridiculous number. We're gonna use 100,000 unreal units so that should be five zero so one two three four i missed one five so i'm just gonna double check that is five zeros for those of you who can't see there you go plug that into the end there did not mean to do that and now we are going to pause just for a moment and we are going to address this missing channel we need so let's just compile this real quick save it and automatically does i know for mine let's go to our edit project settings in project settings we want to go to collision inside of collision what we're going to do is we're going to create a new trace channel and this trace channel will be called landscape we will default landscape to ignore and then we will take care of our preset and our object channel a little bit later, like the next video. So let's go back to our map here. Let's select our landscape. And let's scroll down to find our collision settings. Let's also make sure we're in the details panel and we want to find our collision settings. So there's our collision. Let's expand our preset out a bit and we want to go from block all to custom. We want query, collision enabled, query and physics. We want world static and well, it looks like landscape is there correctly. Sorry, I'm so used to having to actually set that by hand that yeah. All right, we're good to go. Let's go back here and see if we can see landscape. Okay, we can't. So what we need to do is save everything and close the project and reopen it. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you in a moment. All right, here I am back in the editor. I'm just gonna allow that to reopen everything for me. And let's go to our camera pawn, to our adjust camera height, and there is landscape. Okay, so we want to ignore self. You could probably put the debug lines on when you're testing things out. I've already tested it. Again, I have a prep file that I'm reading this from. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take out the out hit and I'm going to break hit result. Now this is a one time I probably don't care about if we hit something or not, because we are going to. If we're not, then something is 
horribly wrong. Like we are not on a map. And then we're gonna do the impact point subtract. And what we're gonna subtract from there is the actor's location. And then we're going to normalize this by getting the vector length. Now, I would love not to do this on a tick because vector length is actually weirdly intensive. Um, it's not the worst we could do, but it's just enough that it makes me unhappy. I'd prefer to do this in C++ to be fair. All right, we're gonna create a local variable called distance local. So this is the distance between where we impacted the impact point and where the actor actually is. This distance local is what's going to be used to determine what we need to do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do a branch and we want to check what our distance local is versus a target amount. So to do this, we're going to first take our distance local and we want to know is our distance local equal to or nearly equal to our target. And because these are floats, we want to use nearly equal because, yeah, there can be a bit of, um, it can just be off slightly and go, oh, it's not equal and freak out. This goes, is it equal within a certain tolerance? And we're actually going to give it a very large tolerance of 0.1. And then we are going to create a new variable called target pawn height. So I'm going to promote this to a variable. This is target pawn height. All right, so is our distance local and our target pawn height within that tolerance? Now our distance local will be set on the fly. However, our target pawn, which is why I compiled, we will set to 189. And what this is, is it's the size of the sphere, the spring arm and camera and its size overall halved. It took me a bit to work out what that number is. Actually, it's not exactly at halved. It's within plus or minus five, but it works for what we're doing. So if it's within this tolerance, then hey, we're done. We, we don't need to do anything. We can just yep out of there because yeah, that's all we care about is making sure that it's properly aligned and all that fun, fine stuff. Okay. If it isn't, then we need to check if the camera is too high. And if it is, we need to move the camera down. So we'll do a branch down here. And for this one, what we're gonna do is we are going to check, is the distance local greater than the target pawn height? Okay, so if it is, then we are too high. That's all that's saying, we are too high. And if we are too high, we are going to bring the camera down. So what we're going to do is we are going to get the set actor location. There we go. We're gonna just plug that into the true real quick. And for this, what we're going to do is we are going to do vector subtracted by vector. For the top pin, this is the easy one. We get actor location. So where are we currently at versus where do we want to move towards? And to do that, we're gonna split that structure because we don't care about the X and the Y. We only care about the height. X and Y, like I said, during the edge goal is taken care of there. Z is taken care of here. Well, we don't have the actual value. We know what numbers we need to get that value. We have two variables that do it. We want to take the difference between the distance local and the target height and move down, thus subtraction, in that direction. So I'm going to copy my distance local and my target pawn, and I'm going to do float minus float or subtract. Is something already deprecated? Sorry, Unreal 5 literally came out this week and I just saw that uh, deprecated thing. Give me one second, I'm just really curious. Uh, okay, cool. I, I yeah, got nothing for that one. All right, and that's also gonna go into our return there. Now, we have another condition. If we aren't hitting true here, we're hitting false. Well, that's up, so too high up adjust down. Now we need to do well, for too far down, we need to move the camera up. So we're going to take this bit. We're just going to duplicate it down. Actually, we're going to take this and this bit and we're going to just paste them down there. And off the false, this one's a little bit easier to take care of, which is why we're doing this one last. We are going to add to that vector and that's going to become our new location. By the way, these both should have sweep ticked. I skipped that. And this one, we need to split the structure again. We're just going to add 290. Again, I worked that number out just by trial and error. Literally trial and error because it, it took me a lot to actually work out what the number was. I tried different formula. It was really obvious in the end, but getting there was tricky. So for this, we don't need the overlap. What we do need is the event tick. And on the event tick, we are going to do our adjust height. There we go. All right, let's see if this works. So once we've compiled and saved, what I want you to do is go over to the main window and hit play. Okay, something's wrong. Okay, so I'm just gonna yoink out of there. Okay. 
I think I fell far enough. Yeah, I kept falling. Um, I'm pretty sure I kept falling at least. One way to find out. Find out where the landscape is. Yeah, no, I'm definitely below the landscape. So for some reason, I fell a massive amount through my landscape. So we do that and then hit pause and then hit F8. See if I can find where the landscape is again. Well, okay, I'm having a bit of a tricky time finding it. So we know there is something wrong though. We know we're falling through our map. Okay, so, all right, sorry about the jump there. Uh, the editor crashed right as I was saying that sentence. So it's actually a really simple fix, by the way, what's happening. And I've left this in just so we can see the bug. So if you wanna see how to work it out, what you wanna do is go here at a breakpoint. It's gonna trigger right away. And we can see that is our distance, that is our target, and thus we are way, way off in the two. In fact, if we go through, you can see what the number is. Actually, I think you can see it right now. I know you can't. But let's work backwards. Let's see if we can work out why we're getting this really big number and this number. Go to our impact point. We have zero, zero, zero as compared to 192 on our So that makes sense that these numbers are, are massive. They're, they're way different stuff. So let's check something. Let's check the placement of our terrain. And this is how you know what's going on our terrain isn't at zero. So in other words, we're ignoring the terrain. So let's go down to our collision. And in our collision, let's let landscape to block. There we go. Now let's hit play. Notice we're not falling through the map anymore. I zoom out, I zoom in, I pan the camera. Forgot what the pan key was for half a second there. And whoa, hey, look, there we are. We're able to move around that material there. We're able to go down that hill. Likewise, hey, we can go up this mountain and back down it. There we go. That's all it took was making sure that the correct collision settings were set and we're able to move with the terrain. All right, that takes us through what we wanted to do in today's tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we'll finish up setting up the basic movement controls in terms of getting the movement speed modifier. So when we hold down shift to move faster and we will set up the map boundaries. So if you wanna be here for that, make sure to hit the subscribe and notify icon. And if you wanna take your support a bit further, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon. All right, that said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial and I hope that you have a wonderful day.